Hey everyone, so this is part two of the videos about desktop calendar that I created and it was a template that I put. So if I wanted to change it to 2014, I've clicked on the text and I'm just going to hit delete on my keyboard or I can come up to edit and hit delete object. Takes it away. And then I would want to put in text and this will bring up a text box like here with the registration marks around it and I'm going to put in 2013 highlight it and come across and change the font to and change the color and this color here if you click on it brings up the color conversation box and across the top of the color converse conversation box, you can see palette, combos, swatches, HSB, RGB, picker, and favorites. I'm going to start off with explaining what palette does. The palette has the Stampin' Up! palettes of colors. It has all the colors from, including retired colors and in colors. And each year you'll get an update in MDS that will give you the new in colors. So you can see this year's in colors along here Midnight Muse, Gumball Green, Summer Starfruit, Raspberry Ripple, and Primrose Petals. So in the palette, you can keep them all higgledy piggledy like I have them. I never get around to org organizing them. I kind of know where everything is, so I know to just go straight to it. But you can, if you like all yours in specific format, then you could like say let's you like all your yellows together. You can click on the box and drag your yellows all into one place. So they're all next to one another. Or you can rearrange them into families. So if you want to keep all your regals together, um, keep all your subtles together, you can rearrange them in that way. It's entirely up to you and that's this is a new thing with MDS2. If you don't like the way you've got them and you don't want to sit and pull them all back again, you can just hit reset and it brings them all back to the way that they came. Let's go on to combos. Now combos is another new thing that happened with MDS2. So if I like Yo-Yo Yellow and I like it but I don't know what I can put with it, I can click on Yo-Yo Yellow and it will come up with a combination of colours that will go with that. Um, you can then add that to your favourite combination if you like it. So I'll click on add to favourites. I'll go to my favourites and I'll show you that it's brought up those colours here. So that's what combos do. If you are working and you don't know what colour combination you want, you can click on surprise me and it'll give you options to choose from. I never use the swatches. Um, I don't know why I don't use them. I think because they're not specific Stampin' Up! colours and I like to keep a lot of my stuff specific to the Stampin' Up! Um, palette. HSB or HSV, whichever way, is the hue, saturation and value point. And you can move the mouse around and it'll tell you your colour down here in the sample text. Like this. What this is handy for is if you're in the palette and you have something that you want in Raspberry Ripple and then you so you click on Raspberry Ripple and you can go to the HSB it'll tell you that the red green blue RGB code for Raspberry Ripple so if you're working in another program and you wanted to have something in Raspberry Ripple say you wanted to have text in Word and you were working in Word you want that text to be Raspberry Ripple to match something you were going to put on the page, then you can just change the colour to this RGB code in Word and you'll have Raspberry Ripple. The RGB is the RGB sliders again. And then Picker is a fun option. If you have a photograph on the page, let's say you had a little girl with a pink dress and it's not a Stampin' Up! colour of pink, and you can get one that's close enough probably because we have so many pinks, but you can go on to Picker and then put your mouse, drag your mouse over her pink dress and you see it'll come up in this window here. So this is the green that's been used on the front. Of, and if I click on that, it'll use that colour in my text. So if you have a pink dress and you want text to match, you can do it that way. 
Okay, so I'm going to go back and I want to do the same colour as I have this 2013 on the bottom, which I think is early espresso, but I'm just going to select it this way anyway. Okay. And I'm going to just make the text box the same size, just for a management point of view. When it goes red like that, it means it's too small. See how it's gone red? So I just need to make it a little larger. And to move it, I click off of it, and then I click back on it again to move it. And you see those grey registration marks. So I could rotate it, I can make it smaller or larger, whatever I want to do. And it just changes the size of the text box. It doesn't change the size of the text. In order to do that, you would have to click on your text and then come over to your size in your text menu box. Okay, so now I've changed it to 96. That box is too small for that text. So I have to make that larger. And with this, the template was already this blue color on the background. I just wanted to add different snowflakes. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to delete this snowflake to let you see how I added this first stamp. So imagine there was nothing on this page. I went over to the design center and I added, clicked on add stamp. Now you can go over to the resource palette and this little icon here, this is stamps also. And it's also up here. And it's also on insert add stamp. But again, like I said, I tend to work for the design center, so I'm clicking add a stamp on the design center. And it'll bring up the choose stamp conversation box. In this box, you'll have all your stamps listed. If you click on the stamp set, it'll bring up the stamps that are in that stamp set. There you go. Okay. But I know that I have so many snowflakes that I'm actually going to click down here in the search box and put in snowflake. And even before you finish typing, it will start to home in on parts of your word. So it would start, if I hadn't put in snowflake, it would come up with everything that has snow in it. So the let it snow, the snowman, snow falling, anything that's got snow in it. There we go. But because I put in snowflake, it homes in on just the snowflakes. And here are all the snowflakes I have as stamp brush sets. So I like this one, I'm going to click on this. And to put it onto your page, either click once and click apply, or double click, and then you can close. You can also add that stamp to your favorite, so that if you use that one a lot, which is handy if you're using um, a piece of text or something like that, a stamp that's a sentiment, you can add it to your favorites and then you, you can access them from there. What that does is it brings it up real size. The difference between the MDS original program and MDS2 is that the original program had JPEGs and the MDS2 has SVG files. So it brings up real size. So if I had this stamp and went and stamped it, this would be the size it would be. It always comes into your program black. So you have to recolor and it always gives you your registration point so you can resize. So I'm going to resize this just slightly. The other way to resize is to make sure that you've selected your stamp and you have your hatch marks and then you right click and you'll have edit object and it'll bring up the XY so this is where it is on the page, the position of your stamp on the page and then WH is the width and the height. That's how you would resize. To recolor I come over and I can click change color and that will bring up my color conversation box. The matching color is exactly the same as the picker tool. So I'm going to go to change color just now with this stamp and I'm going to color it Midnight Muse, this one. Okay, so I've colored it Midnight Muse. I'm going to drag it down to where I want it and I'm going to rotate it a little bit. Okay. So imagine this one isn't here. I want to put another one of these snowflakes on. I want it to be the same color of blue, but I don't want it to be exactly the same blue. So what I'm going to do is I've selected this stamp. There's the registration marks. I'm going to go up to Edit, Copy, and Edit, Paste. And that will bring up another exactly the same 
stamp. Now I could just do right click copy and then right click paste and there are lots of different ways for you to do it. If you go to the menu that will be the way that you can learn what to start off with and then you'll learn eventually that you can see that here copy is um, command C and paste is command V. You'll learn that these shortcuts eventually but for now it's best to go up to the edit unless you're confident using your shortcuts on your keyboard. So I have two of these stamps. I want this second one to be much smaller. So I'll change the size of it and put it over to here. I want to just turn this one a little bit more because it's touching this white one down at the bottom. Here we go. That's better. This blue one on the right hand side, I didn't want it to be exactly the same colour. So I'm going to change the opacity and that's over here on the right hand side here. So as I change the opacity you can see it getting paler and darker again. I just want to take it a little bit so it's not quite the same as this blue one. There we go. That's fine. Now what I'm going to do is for the next page I want the same snowflakes again and rather than um, put them all again, colour them all again, position them all again, what I'm going to do is copy them but I can copy them as a group. So I'm going to click on this grey snowflake and then hit shift on my keyboard. So that would be the arrow that's pointing up that you press to make a capitalised letter. Then I'm going to click on this snowflake, this one, this one, this, this one, and this one. And you can see then that all of these registration marks for all the individual snowflakes um, are, have come up on the screen. Then you click right click and group or you can go up to arrange and group or you can hit command G and that will group them. So again there's lots of different ways. Now what I'm going to do that these are grouped it means that if I move them they'll all move at the same time. So if you have several pieces of text and you want to keep them all the same, you can group them. If you have several stamps on the page and you want to keep them all the same, you can group them. But now what I'm going to do with this page is I'm going to right click copy. And again, I could do command C or I can go up to edit and copy. I'm going to copy this. And then I'm going to switch over to my next page, which is my January page. And imagine that these were not all here for you. You can see what happens. So now I'm on the page that I want to be on. I'm just going to right click paste or control V or edit paste. And here I have brought all my stamps here. If you then try to move them, they'll all move at once. Okay. So you right click again and group and ungroup. And that brings up all these registration marks showing that you have all of the stamps selected. So unclick off the page a bit and they'll, then I'm going to select this stamp here which is just the four registration marks around this stamp and I'm going to move this one slightly so it's away from this 29 and slightly to the right. There you go. So I have all the same stamps the same as the previous page so it makes it flow a little better.